Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I recently bought a new belt because my old one became pretty worn down after using it for a few years. While I do like the look of this new one, I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish it had the ability to tickle whoever wears it at the press of a button. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 3 is the episode where Spongebob and Patrick unfreeze the evil Man Ray while looking after the Mermaid Lair for Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy and try to teach him how to be good. This episode aired on September 14, 2001, and it's the episode that introduced the most well-known Murray Man and Barnacle Boy supervillain, Man Ray. Man Ray is named after a manta ray, and it's a parody of Black Manta, the arch nemesis of Aquaman. Man Ray was previously mentioned in episode 12, Murray Man and Barnacle Boy from season 1. The evil Man Ray swoops down and swipes the gun away and shoots all the algae. But this is his first physical appearance in the show. Man was originally intended to be voiced by Guy Siner, but ended up being voiced by John Rhys Davis. It must have been pretty late in the game because the end credits were never updated with John Rhys Davis as Man Ray. Davis returned to voice Man Ray in his next appearance in episode 103, Murray Man of Barnacle Boy 5 from season 3. After that, his next appearance with a speaking role is episode 186, Murray Man vs. Spongebob from season 5, and he's voiced by Bob Jules starting with that episode. This is the only Murray Man and Barnacle Boy episode with the two characters' names in the title that doesn't prominently feature Murray Man and Barnacle Boy. They only appear in the first two minutes or so in the episode, and then they disappear for the rest of it. Despite how good this episode is, this episode was seemingly erased from Spongebob history later on in Season 7. In episode 259, Back to the Past, we see that the younger Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy did indeed intend to stop Man Ray with quick drying tartar sauce. But in that episode, Patrick ended up eating the tartar sauce, and after more confusion with the time machine, Man Ray was just simply arrested, and that was it. When I realized this, I was shocked thinking any episode at all was not canon in the Spongebob timeline. But that's a totally different discussion. Now let's watch this episode and see Man Ray for the first time again. So the episode starts up and Murray Man and Barnacle Boy are getting ready to leave for vacation, but they need somebody to look after the Mermelair. So who else other than Spongebob and Patrick to help with this? They seriously chose them? And not Mario and Luigi? Spongebob and Patrick got excited when they saw all of Murray Man and Barnacle Boy's superhero gadgets, but they were told by Murray Man and Barnacle Boy to not touch anything, including the Orb of Confusion and Invisible Boatmobile. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy left, and Spongebob and Patrick had the Mermelair to themselves. Or so they thought. They soon encountered Man Ray. He was in a prison chamber made out of frozen tartar sauce. Spongebob was so excited and wanted to ask questions. Patrick started unfreezing him, but Spongebob stopped it from unfreezing, but it was too late because Man Ray's head was free. It wouldn't have happened if Spongebob had flipped the lever before he started arguing with Patrick. The evil Man Ray claimed he was good and not evil, so Spongebob and Patrick would let him out, and the two of them agreed. When Man Ray was let out, he tried to attack them, but was stopped by the tickle bell from Murray Man of Barnacle Boy episode 17. As seen in episode 17! See? Why can't my belt be like that one? Man Ray decided to pretend to want to become nice to trick Spongebob and Patrick to take the belt off him. Spongebob and Patrick agreed to teach him how to be nice, all according to Man Ray's plan. The first lesson they tried to teach him was how to return a wallet to somebody who dropped it. Patrick kept saying that the wallet wasn't his, even though there was an ID in the wallet that was Patrick's, Patrick still said the wallet wasn't his. To be fair, the ID is Patrick's, but the wallet doesn't have Patrick's name or picture on it like the ID does. Man Ray lost his temper and Spongebob used a tickle belt again. The second lesson was to help somebody struggling with a heavy package, but Patrick kept dropping the box on Man Ray's foot, and it was indeed heavy with Patrick's actual wallets. Man Ray got pissed off and beat up Patrick, so Spongebob used the tickle belt again. I don't think Man Ray should be mad about the box having wallets inside of it. It was still heavy regardless. Later on, Spongebob tried to think of another lesson, but an injured Patrick grabbed the remote and used it to tickle Man Ray when he didn't guess the number Patrick was thinking of. Spongebob and Patrick started arguing over the remote, and the remote broke and started tickling him to the Man Ray begged to make it stop and said please. Spongebob and Patrick thought that meant he was reconstituted. Rehabilitated. He didn't sneeze. Spongebob used a key to unlock the belt, but Man Ray grabbed some weapons and escaped. Spongebob and Patrick found out that Man Ray tricked them the whole time and set out to stop him. They took the invisible bulb mobile and Patrick gave Spongebob an invisible license but they crashed anyway. 
They soon found Man Ray and activated the Orb of Confusion, but that didn't work. Man Ray tried to rob the first nautical bank, but he kept laughing, which made nobody take him seriously. Man Ray discovered that he still felt the tickle from the belt even though it was gone, so he decided there was no need to do evil anymore and opened a checking account. He went back and turned off the Orb of Confusion and told Spongebob that he was indeed kind now. Spongebob was excited since he and Patrick actually saved the day, but Patrick was still confused from the Orb of Confusion and the episode ends. Forget that, what happened to Spongebob's invisible license? Does he still have it? So that was Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 3, and I really love this episode. There are a ton of funny scenes in this one. Everybody says the wallet scenes are the highlight of the episode, and I can only echo that. My personal favorite part of this scene was when Patrick kept dropping the box filled with his wallets on Man Ray's foot. I remember one morning when I was a kid, I was watching this episode on TV before leaving for the school bus. My grandma was in the room with me, and she laughed when Patrick said, Return what to who? That is definitely one of the best lines of the episode. I also like how the tickle belt is introduced. Swindon and Patrick look helpless when Man Ray is coming at them, but Swindon casually presses the button to activate the belt. It's awesome. The Orb of Confusion scenes are pretty funny too. I remember as a kid, I was a bit confused as to why Patrick was like that at the very end, especially since Spongebob was technically exposed to the orb longer than Patrick was. But I guess it kinda makes sense. Spongebob only flipped the switch while Patrick was actually holding it. Now yes, Spongebob held the orb too, as shown in this close-up, but he didn't hold it for as long as Patrick did, so that's probably why Patrick was more confused than Spongebob was at the end. Speaking of Patrick, he's awesome in this episode. For the most part, for the scene when he tickles Man Ray for revenge, his motives are understandable since Man Ray beat the shit out of him in the previous scene. His actions may not be morally justified, but at least there's a reason for his being mean here. And with that, let's talk about Man Ray himself. Man Ray is such a strong character in this episode. I really like the first image we see of Man Ray when Spongebob and Patrick were trembling in fear. This image is so striking and it's awesome. I love his plan to pretend to reform so he can get the belt taken off him and wreak havoc in Bikini Bottom. It's so funny seeing Spongebob and Patrick unknowingly torture him, especially since he did technically deserve it considering how he was scheming the whole time. His laugh when he's being tickled is pretty contagious here. I also love that he is actually able to reform at the end of the episode. Since he discovered that he would just feel the tickle every time he would attempt to do something evil, that was his sign that he shouldn't continue to commit crimes again. He could have continued to commit crimes in this episode, but he doesn't. He opens a checking account and tells Spongebob that he has indeed become a better person. I love that. It is kind of a shame that Man Ray is evil again by the next season, but considering that in Back to the Past, the history is changed by Man Ray getting arrested and not trapped in quick drying tartar sauce. So I guess that would explain why he becomes evil again in the future, but at least this episode proves that he could change for the better. It's a great character moment for Man Ray. Honestly, I don't really have anything to complain about for the episode. I guess if I were to say anything, it is a bit odd that Murray Man and Barnacle Boy are in the title despite having only two minutes of screen time at the beginning of the episode. But that's really not worth bitching about. The story itself is perfect and I love how everything plays out. I do wish some of these cool gadgets could have been seen or used again in the future, but that's not really relevant either. On the other hand, I do have to say, what about Spongebob's invisible boating license? It was never shown him being taken away by Man Ray or even Mrs. Puff. He's not supposed to have a license, remember? But like I said, this is probably another result as to this episode being erased from history. Man, I mentioned that a lot today. But at least this is still a good episode. I always loved watching this episode as a kid, and I still love it to this day. Oh right, there's also the part where Spongebob and Patrick tremble in fear of Man Ray. That's a good scene too. Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 3 is a great episode. There are so many funny scenes, and Man Ray himself is such a strong character in this one. And, um... I think that's about all I have to say. I like it, but I'm actually finding it difficult to say more things about it, so I'll just leave it there. With another complaint that my belt can't actually tickle anybody.